To process invoices in the system, go to the Stock tab. And then to Receiving Orders. Receiving orders is like your in-tray or to-do list. Any supplier invoices that are sent in will come here and this is where you receive the stock and approve your invoices and credit notes. In this example, the order was placed outside of the system over the phone or via some other method. So when the invoice has come in, there is no purchase order to link it to. All this means is that you process the invoice as a no match order because there is nothing to match the invoice to. Here you can see there are items on the invoice that are new to the database. They don't exist in the stock list so they need to be entered into the system before the invoice can be processed. You will need to update the unit of measure so that the system knows the volume of stock included in the item. We know that one each box can't convert into grams or kilos, so we need to teach the system what volume of stock this item accounts for. To do this we enter in the quantity and the unit. We know this is a 10 kilogram bag for example. And this one is a 5 kilogram box. In this example, we have weighed the item so that we can have an approximate weight saved for this item when it comes in from future invoices. Similarly with the cabbage, I went and weighed a cabbage to get an approximate weight so I can now use 10 grams or 5 kilograms of cabbage and it will still scale using the weighted measurements. You can now save your updated units of measure and stock details and add the individual stock items to your inventory list. Sometimes suppliers will change their stock codes or descriptions, which will create new stock items when they are read by Invoice Ripper. If you see a stock item that you believe already exists within that supplier's stock list, make sure you click the link button here and then try and link this item to an existing stock item within the system. You can search by description or by the supplier's stock code to see if it's an existing item. In this case it is a brand new stock item, so we can simply add it into our stock list. Now you're on the invoice detail page. Here you can compare the invoice to the line item CTB has recognized if there's anything on the invoice that doesn't look quite right. For example, if we've mapped something incorrectly or you spot a formatting error, you can flag an extraction issue here and type in your notes. This will send them directly to the Invoice Ripper team, who will then remap the invoice and send it back in for you to process. If everything looks right, you can continue on to checking off the stock items that have been delivered and click save. What you can see from here is the invoice detail for the stock items. Because the order was placed outside of the system, we can't compare the expected quantities but we can compare the last purchase price to the invoice price. For some items you can see that we have locked in pricing. In this example, we were expecting to pay $65 a kilo, but you can see here we've been charged $67.50. Because we've been overcharged for an item with locked in pricing, the system is prompting us to create a credit note request to send to the supplier for the difference in price. For the other items, here we can see we've been charged less than we were last time, the system will let you know about it, but we'll keep that between us. Here is a similar example, $2.50 was the locked in price, but we've been charged $2.93, so the system has worked out the difference in price and prompted you to create a credit note request for the overcharged amount. If there's anything else on here that you aren't happy with, for example, if one of the boxes didn't arrive, we can simply click on here and pick one of the credit request options and then approve the invoice. You'll see a pop-up from the system telling you that we've marked a few items for a credit note, just click yes to continue. In this next step, the system has worked out the difference in price for each of my items with locked in pricing overcharge. For the Wombok, where we said it was the incorrect quantity, we only need a credit for one unit, the other three were delivered. What you would do in this example is, edit the note to say, only three of four delivered. This means that when you send the credit note request to the supplier, they will receive the information you've entered, which will make it easier for them to get all of the details they need to process your credit note. When the text box pops up you can leave them a cranky note about being overcharged for locked in pricing, and maybe even attach photographs to the credit note request so that it's easier for the supplier to organize your credit for you. 
Once you're happy with the details, you can go ahead and click send. Back in the receiving orders page, you can see the invoice has now gone from this section and has been moved to the invoices and credits page where all of your processed invoices are kept. In the receiving orders page, you are left with this credit note request reminder. Once the actual credit note is sent in by the supplier, it can be linked to the credit note request, allowing you to compare your credit note request against the total that they have actually agreed to credit you for.